G'day folks. Well this is one of two videos that I'm making where I'm showing how to solve the 3x3x3 cube. And in this version I'm going to do a method which is all of the edges first and then followed by all of the corners. So initially I'm not thinking about the corners. All I want to do is solve the edges. Now this will have two algorithms. So the first algorithm to solve the edges will be four moves and the second algorithm to solve the corners will be eight moves. So uh, not too tricky. Uh, if you want to look at the other version, that just uses one algorithm. So let's get going here. The first thing that I want to do is solve the white cross. And when you're a beginner, it's not always obvious what to do. You can see that this white red piece is definitely in position. What I'm looking for to get another white piece in position, another white edge, is that I have a white edge on the bottom face with the white sticker on the bottom. That's what I want. And so when I find that, that's white blue, I'm going to turn that around until it is directly underneath where it needs to go. So that matches up with that blue center. When I've got that, I just turn it up to the top and that white blue edge is now in position. Now when I can't see any on the bottom like that, then the next thing I'll look for is to see if there's a, a white edge in the middle layer somewhere. Now, totally, of course, I could just turn this is the white orange position so many of you will know I can just turn that around turn it up and turn it back and I'm done but I want to think about what would happen if it wasn't quite that simple and we had another piece sitting here or here or something the method to get a piece from the middle layer to the top layer that's quite simple to understand is simply turn it down turn this piece down to the bottom layer and do it so that the white sticker lands on the bottom so if I do that the white sticker is not going to land on the bottom if I do this, it is. Now that that white sticker is on the bottom, I'm back into the position that I was looking for before. I can turn this around, and then I can turn it up to its position, and the white orange has been placed. Now I've got the same problem here. I've got the white green. I need to get that to the bottom. It's between two white edges that I've already done. So again, going to turn it to the bottom. You'll notice that it's knocked the white orange out. So in this case, I just want to turn that bottom face away so that I can replace the white orange like that. Now that I've got my white green there, I can turn that around underneath the green and I can turn it into position. Now there is one other scenario that I want to set up for now. <clears throat> okay, and here we are and it's a scenario where you've got it's not in the middle layer. You've got the piece on the bottom layer, but the white sticker is not on the bottom. Now, I should say that this is actually identical to something like the following. If I had it either there, so it's directly underneath where it needs to go, or if I had it here, where it's underneath where it needs, or it's actually in the position, but it's flipped. All of those are essentially the same thing. So what I want to do, where did we start from? We started from here. I want to turn this piece initially into the middle layer. Now I don't really want to do that, although I could. I want to be just a little bit simpler than that. So turn it to the face where there's no white pieces up here and then just turn it up to the middle layer there like that. So I haven't knocked out any of these other white edges. Now you'll see that I'm in a position to turn that down to the bottom. I've got to replace that white red. So I'll just turn the white green off replace the white red and now that white green is underneath the white sticker is on the bottom I can turn it up and complete the white cross okay now the white cross is done so at this point I next want to do the edges in the middle layer I want to do three of them any three of them it doesn't matter so let's start with any edge that is on the top face that doesn't have a yellow sticker so here we go red blue and I want to position that red blue above where it needs to go so that it's going to turn down correctly. You can see that is correctly matched with the center colors there. In other words, I don't want to have it there because that would not. So here it is. Once I've done that, I do an edge piece series, which is also known as a 3-1 commutator. I like to just call it a down, down, up, up. And that red blue has been placed. You'll notice that it's not touched any of these things at all. All right, I'm going to find another one on the top that's not yellow. There's an orange blue. So I'm going to turn it above the orange blue so it's in the position where it's going to turn down to be correctly oriented. 
Not yet. There we go. This sticker color will match there. Now I'm going to turn it down into its position, doing a down, down, up, up. Okay, let's find another one. Ah, all of the edges on the top now are yellow, so that means the rest of them are in the middle layer somewhere. So to get it out of the middle layer, I simply want to do a down, down, up, up. And you can see that's placed the orange-green up on the top face. Let's turn it around to where it needs to be sitting correctly. And now down, down, up, up. <coughs> now that's good. At this point, I've got three edges in the middle layer that are done. I now want to do the... I actually want to keep this fourth edge, and I'm not concerned about that because I want to use that to help me solve the edges on the top. Now I'm going to cut across here to the exact same process from the other video. Cut it in here because it is precisely the same, and I'll see you on the other side. Now that leads me to sort of the next section. It's the last section of doing the edges. What I want to do is just note how many I've got to go. I've got one, two, three here, and I've got two more at the back. I want to get to the stage where I'm down to these last three. So what I'm going to focus on first is these two at the back. I'm going to look and see that they are yellow red, that's my first edge, and yellow green. They are the two edges I'm interested in first. And remember this is all about simplicity. So this is definitely not the quickest way but it's the easiest way to understand it. What I want to do is have my desired edge, so in this case I'm going to focus on the yellow red, in this position in the middle layer. Doesn't matter if it's red yellow or yellow red, that's irrelevant. Just as long as the edge is in the middle layer here. And I'm going to think I could turn that edge up to the top in one of two ways. I could do it that way, so the yellow sticker lands on top. Or I could do it that way, so the yellow sticker does not land on top. Now I'm trying to place this edge, so I need that yellow sticker to land on top. So I'm going to be turning it that way. If I turn it that way, it's landed into this position here, but I don't want it in that position there, I want it in this position. So what I'm going to do is firstly turn that position around, then turn my edge into its position, and then undo. Now I've put it there, now you can see the whites have come out, and so I need to undo that as well. Just to convince you, all of the first two layers that we had are still there. Now, if I look at it, that yellow red is in position. That's been solved. Now that move there is actually pretty much the same move as the up, up, down, down, or the down, down, up, up. It's just in a slightly different form. But you don't even need to think of it as a move. All you need to do is say, well, I'm going to place this edge, and here we've got the yellow green. Let's have a think about this, because that's the other one we've got here. It's got to go over to that position. This time I don't want to turn this face because the yellow sticker won't be on top. I want to turn this face. Before I turn that face, I want to bring the position of the yellow green, which is this position here, around there, then turn the yellow green up to its position, then undo that to put the yellow green there, and undo this to put the white pieces back. Now you'll see at this point that we've got those two desired edges are now in position. That's good. And that is going to leave us with one of about four different possibilities of things that can happen. And I'm going to tell you every single possibility. In fact, I'm going to say there's five. The first one is that they are solved. Obviously, if they're solved, you move on with your life. The second one is, and I'm going to do these in the order that I think makes sense. So if this is not the correct thing that I've got at the moment, I'm going to set up for it. The second one is a three cycle where I have two edges that are oriented correctly. Now, let me set up for that because this is not what's showing at the moment. Alright, well here we have the first of these cases. It's a three cycle, as I said, where two of the edges are oriented correctly. Now let me explain what I mean by that. These three edges all need to turn into a particular position. So this yellow blue needs to turn into that position. In other words, I need to turn it around like that. And you can see that when it turns into that position, it is correctly oriented. What about the blue orange? Where does that need to go? Well, that blue orange needs to go down here. And when it turns into that position, it is correctly oriented. The third piece, the yellow-orange, that needs to go to this position. When it turns into this position, you can see that that is wrongly oriented. So that's what I mean by three edges where 
they are in a three cycle, in other words these three edges need to cycle around like that, that's called a three cycle and two of the edges are oriented correctly and the third one is not. Now to solve this situation using the same four moves what we want to do is consider the direction that the edges are going and so you can already see that the direction is this direction around like this and then consider the third piece and I want that third piece to uh, be able to turn up to there but it can't turn directly. If it turns directly it's not going to place. And so when I get to this situation I want to just turn the whole cube around and hold it in a particular, um, I guess a particular way of thinking. And I can do this, I might as well do this because it's going to be a down, down, up, up, which will suit beautifully. And what I'm doing here is the yellow orange you can see has got to go to there. But instead of turning it directly, I want to turn it indirectly. In other words, I want to turn its position down to here and then turn the yellow orange down to there. And so what I'm going to do is perform a down, down, up, up. You'll see when that's done, the three edges are solved. And I'm just going to undo that and talk through that a little bit again. You can see what happened was that by turning this piece here down, which was the yellow-orange position, by turning that down, instead of the yellow-orange edge going directly into that position, it had to go the indirect route. And so it turned down, and you can see as it does that, the yellow sticker matches with that center. That's what's going on there with that move. And you can really, it doesn't really matter how you hold the cube, as long as you understand that whatever that third piece is that's not correctly oriented, you need to turn the others in the direction that the pieces are going to go. So in other words, the yellow blue is going here. So I need to turn it like that, so that this piece turns second. That's going to turn up after it. So the yellow blue goes there, then the yellow orange and then I undo those two moves and that of course is just a down down up up or an up up down down just looked at in a different way so if you have a three cycle like that that's how you get out of it let me set up for the next situation well in this situation we have a three cycle again and we know that because the blue yellow has to go to this position the yellow orange has to go to this position and the blue orange has to go to this position so that is a three cycle of those edges However, we notice that all three of the edges are not correctly oriented. So no matter which one I turn, the blue-yellow down to its position, that's not correct. The yellow-orange up to here, no, that's flipped. And the blue-orange over to here, that's also flipped. So all three of the edges are flipped. Now to get out of this one, all you need to do is do any down, down, up, up, so that you don't turn the pieces into their positions. In other words, I don't want to do a down down which would turn the blue yellow into that position. So I can hold it like this, but I'm happy enough to do a down down which turns this face first because that's going to turn the blue eh, blue orange edge into this position. So let's do that. Down, down, up, up. Now once that's done, when we assess what's going on, we'll see that we're back to the, the really the first case where I've got another three cycle. The blue orange has to go there and that is correctly oriented. The orange yellow has to go there, that is correctly oriented, and the third piece is not correctly oriented, and that's exactly what we want. So now we think, well, how do I set up for that? Well, how do I hold the cube so that effectively I can do it down, down, up, up? Well, I just want to basically think this piece has to go there, not directly. So I'm, I need to do its position down first and then turn it onto its position. So here it comes, down, down, up, up. And that has dealt with that one. Let me set up for the next situation. Alright, well in this situation I've got uh, two edges that are in their positions and flipped. So there's one of them, there's the other one. You'll see they don't need to go anywhere. Orange-yellow is sitting right here where it belongs. Blue-yellow is right there where it belongs. But they are flipped. And the third edge is correctly positioned and oriented. This is also quite simple to get out of, and all we want to do is a down, down, up, up, where the two pieces that I'm turning down are the ones that need to flip. It doesn't matter whether I do this face first or this face first. So we just do a down, and I should say I'm, my third edge is this piece that surrounds the same corner. So this, this, and this. So down, down, up, up. 
And you can see once again that what that's done is left us with two pieces here that are oriented correctly and a third piece uh, which is not oriented correctly. So that yellow orange, when I turn it up, that's not going to be correctly oriented, whereas the other two, that is, and this is. So again, how do I think of this? All I need to do is, if I want to hold it in a down, down, up, up scenario again, do it like this. So the position of the yellow orange, which is here, turns down first. So there's my down, down, up, up. And that has dealt with that. And there's one last situation. Alright, well here we are for this last scenario that we've got. And this scenario, you'll see that these final three edges, one of the edges is in its position and correctly oriented. The other two edges are actually swapped. So this orange-green needs to go to here, and this orange-yellow needs to go to here. Now, that is not a three cycle, that is, as I said, a swap, which is a two cycle. If we have a two cycle, there's only one thing we can really do to get out of that two cycle, and that is to turn the upper face one turn, just like that. Now, it doesn't matter which direction we turn it, I've just turned it clockwise there. We could also turn it anti clockwise as long as it's one turn. Now, having done that, now that I want to complete it, I need to replace, because you'll notice the two edges that we would have had solved back here have now moved around to here. So I need to replace these two edges to there. Clearly, I can't just go like that, because that undoes my one turn fix and leads me back to the same problem. So once I've made that one turn, I need to redo it using an even number of turns, using four turns. So now what I think is, well, that yellow blue belongs in that position. I'm kind of back to replacing these edges. How did we do that at the start? And again, this is not the quickest and simplest, or not the quickest way, but I, I think it's certainly simple. You remember that we wanted these edges down in the middle. So I'm going to place it in the middle using a down, down, up, up. Down, down, up, up. There we go. The yellow blue is now in the middle. And I can look at it and say, how do I get it into that position? Well, I note that it's got to turn up like that. And so once again, I'm going to turn its position around, turn it up, then undo those moves. Now, if you count those moves, they were one, two, three, four. That would be an even number of turns. And that's what I'm talking about here. So that's replaced the yellow blue. Now I've got to replace the yellow red. Where's that? It's here at the moment. I'm going to again put it down in the middle layer. And I'm stressing again, this is not the quickest way, but it's sort of the same consistent way all the time. So let's put it down in the middle layer with a down, down, up, up. There it is. Now which direction, which face has to turn to get that yellow sticker to the top? It's got to be this face here. So that means I need to bring its position around to that face. I'll turn its position around. I'll put it onto its position. There's two turns. Three. Four. And by the way, even if you count those, the turns of the upper face as two turns each, then it would be two turns, three turns, five turns, six. It's still an even number of turns. Now, if we look at what's happened now, the yellow, red, and the yellow, blue have been replaced. And now let's have a look at the three edges here. You'll notice now they are in a three cycle. And so that returns us to one of the scenarios that we've already looked at. In this case, it's the standard three cycle where two of the pieces are going into their position correctly oriented. There's one of them. There's the other. And the third piece needs to be flipped. So I'm going to hold it like this and do a down, down, up, up to turn the position of the yellow orange down here first and then put it on. Down, down, up, up. And that covers all the cases that you could get. All right, well at this point we have all of our edges solved. We have what looks like a cage around the cube and we may or may not have some corners done as well. For instance, that corner there has been done. That's just a fluke. It may not be done. So there may be eight corners that we want to do. Now we're now going to use our second algorithm, and I'm calling the second algorithm the corner piece series. I didn't make that term up, but it's what I use now. It's a very simple algorithm, and it's related to the edge piece series, and there will be 
uh, videos on the rest of this site which explain exactly what they are and show you what they are. So I'm going to assume, uh, I'll put the algorithm on the screen, but I'll assume that you understand what this is. Have a look at the videos for them if you don't. So what I want to do here is just find any corner that needs to roll along an edge and go into position. Now let's find one. Here's an example. This white green edge, a uh, white green orange corner, I can see that it needs to roll along that edge into position. It needs to roll along here and it will turn into its correct position. That's what I want. Now when I find that, um, I I can either do one of the two corner piece series, either the clockwise version or the anti-clockwise version, which is its mirror. In this case, it's going down the right-hand edge here, so I'm going to be using these three pieces of my corners. And that means it's going to be an anti-clockwise or a mirror corner piece series. So I'm now going to carry that out, and it's going to cycle these three corners. That one will go to there. This one will come down to there, and this one will go across the diagonal. Okay, now what's important to note about that is not only that it has solved that corner, this one was already solved, it's solved that corner, it's put it into place, the only other things that it has touched is those corners. It's only involved those three corners in the end. None of the edges have been touched. And that's why we use this after doing all the edges. Let's have a look and see if we can find another corner. And this is the beauty of it, it doesn't matter which corner you choose. Now at this point I can't see any other corners that are going to roll along an edge. So the next thing I'll look for is a corner that will go across a diagonal into its position. What about this one, the yellow, green, red? That has to go across the diagonal to that position. Now because of the nature of the way the corners move, I want to make it so that the colour that belongs on top, which is this yellow colour here, is on the side. So this, it could be on the side, it could be on the front, or it could be on the top. What I want is for it to be on the side. Now I know that I'm going to have those three corners in a cycle. This is a, a clockwise corner piece series. So I'm going to carry that out now and it'll just affect those corners. This one will place over there. You can see it's really symmetrical. It's really nice, very easy to, to learn. And that has now placed the corner. Now we look as though we've opened up this yellow, blue, red corner. That can now roll along an edge here. Um, let's roll along the back edge. So we've got these three corners here. And so again, this is going to be an anti-clockwise corner piece series. And I should just clarify, when I say anti-clockwise, I mean the first turn of the upper face is anti-clockwise. The reason I know that is because if these three corners here are involved, I'm doing an anti-clockwise. And if these three are involved, I'm doing a clockwise. So that's now been done. How many have I got left? It doesn't matter. Let's just find another one that might be able to roll. And in actual fact, I'm now down to my last three. And so this is the end game. And there, I guess you could get a few scenarios for the end game as to where the corners are landed. But essentially, this is what we're looking for. We're just trying to find any one corner that will either roll across, roll down an edge or go across a diagonal and place into position. So here's my corner. That's going to do that. That'll go to that position. This corner needs to go either to here, if I hold it like this, or if I make this roll along the back edge, then it will need to go to here. Let's find the third corner because I want to place the third corner so that it goes correctly into position. Let's have a think. If I turn this up like that, I can see that that third corner would not roll across that. So that's no good. What about if I had, um, let's have a think. If I roll this along the back edge and I turn my third corner up to that, you'll notice that the blue color of that sticker is on the side and in these three I want the pieces to rotate like that and I want the blue which has to go on the top face here on the side so that piece is actually going to go across to here and that means because that piece will place and I know that piece will place this also must place 
So I'm now going to carry out that final corner piece series. That's been done. I did have to do that setup move. So I now turn that back. You can see that all the corners have been placed and that means the whole cube is solved. Now at some point in the future I may end up doing a video which shows just a whole bunch of different scenarios of that end game. But for now that's essentially what you need to know to solve the cube using those two algorithms.